Hey, Pastor Dana here. Uh, between Friday, August 28th, and Thursday, September 4th, I had a series of glimpses and dreams that got longer each night. And uh, I'm seeing more and more things in my dreams that are apocalyptic. Um, frightening. I don't share these dreams to cause people to have fear. Um, but I saw the calendar of December and I saw a finger underlined slowly and like it was pushing slowly and forcefully under the line, under the name December. Flipped over to January and then underlined it just as slow and was pushing first thing I saw was long food lines. I saw people waiting for what seemed like hours. And they were standing in line and not in cars. And I saw this throughout the nation. Um, I saw ships in ports on both the east and the west coast. They were just sitting idle. There was nothing moving at sea. Nothing. And I saw a headline that said the Baltic Dry Index is dead. It said that nothing was moving in trade around the world. And one thing I noted, there were no Christmas lights, this was December, there were no holiday displays, there were no sales mentioned, no Christmas lights, no Christmas displays, no Santa Claus, no Easter, no, no Christmas type things going on at all. It was a great sadness over the land, and there was, people seemed very dazed, and they seemed very confused. But there were Christians who stood out because they had faith, they had hope in Christ, and they appeared like, they looked like burning charcoal, and they were carrying torches wherever they went. And a lot of people rejected their approach, but they kept they, they kept their faith. They didn't back down from telling people about Jesus. And they kept telling people that they desperately need Jesus at that moment. It was, you need Jesus now. You need Jesus now. You need Jesus now. Don't wait. Don't You don't have tomorrow. You need Jesus now. And a lot of it was rejected. But there were some that were coming and, and surrendering and praying and, uh, and being saved in the dream. I saw what looked like shopping malls that had been converted into shelters or living quarters. It reminded me of, it reminded me of um, Hurricane Katrina when it came through and the football stadium. Um, it was, it was the, the businesses in those malls were shuttered, but I saw people on cots and I saw food outreach things going on. I saw, I saw people who were misplaced. This was not like a homeless shelter. This was like, Something had happened that people were in shelters. Um, I continued to see shuttered properties. I saw people in homes who were wearing coats, coats, while the windows were, they were looking at closed curtains. And, and I've, that's been a consistent thing in, in the dreams, people inside their homes looking at what's going on. And when, I look, when people were looking out, out the curtains, the curtains came back far enough that I could see more of the snow-like stuff that was on the road. It was dingy, it was dark, it was gray. It wasn't white, pure snow like after a first uh, fresh snowfall. I saw headlines. I said, nationwide outages plagued the Southwest. Another headline that said, Americans don't know who to blame for darkness. And some of the darkness in the areas, it stretched into Canada. It was, it was north. It wasn't everywhere. But I saw America with as, as lights flickering. And it was like I saw the whole contour outline of the United States of America, including uh, Alaska and, 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 and uh, Hawaii. And it was, it was like it was a light flick. Like right before a light goes out, it flickers, it starts flashing. That was what it looked like. It was like America was a light bulb about to go out. I saw vultures. I saw vultures with food hanging out of their mouth. These, these vultures were heavy. I, the, a word I don't like to use is the word fat, but these vultures were fat. And they had rotting food hanging out of their mouths. I saw depression as a, as a figure, as a creature. And it was... It had a face mask on with a smile, but it was choking people and pushing them down to the ground. And then I saw the St. Louis Arch, and I saw people standing 
under the St. Louis Arch in very, very expensive business suits. All of them had very expensive watches, and at their feet were these briefcases, larger than briefcases, almost like I'm, I'm, it, it reminded me of like a nuclear suitcase, a nuclear briefcase that they talked about in the 80s. And uh, suddenly all of their alarms went off at the same time, and they hit them, and they grabbed the briefcase, and they got into these black SUVs. And, of course, the Mississippi River goes right through there. It divides, it divides the, the country. And I saw them get in the black SUVs, and they went east, and they, went, they were going all over the place. Each of them had a, a Wall Street Journal uh, a newspaper under their arms, and they had heavily tinted sunglasses. And the next headlines that I read were about market crashes, about yields being lost, and one of the one of the, sim- the headlines declared sympathy for the swastika. I saw tired crowds. I saw tired people. I saw many who had lost the lost the resolve to fight due to the emotional overcast of the nation. And I heard Christians, that group of Christians that was going around with hope. I heard them saying that they remember what Jesus had said about the winter and, and having to flee in winter. But they kept encouraging one another in faith. I saw lights all over the country. I knew, and I knew that these, these lights were churches. Whether they were churches like, like we think of today, or whether they were um, house churches. But, and I felt in my spirit, did not hear this, but felt as I was watching this, that these churches were keeping warmth and hope in their communities. That white figure rose up out of the, one of those lights. And he said, brace yourself. Brace, brace, brace yourself on the word and my promises. And do not rely on your own strength. Every one of the dreams have had a little bit different caliber to them. This one left me more unsettled. I see him in glimpses. It's like a movie trailer. I see a little bit one night, a little bit more the next night. More details are added. But the scenes of people in the shelters, the food lines, um, the Baltic Dry Index being dead really, really, really stood out to me. And uh, those are the things that are heavy in my mind. And I'm, I'm, look, I'm not going to try to interpret these dreams. I'm just, I, I feel that as a watch, I'm just supposed to share them. I think some of what's gonna gonna happen is obvious. Um, I'm continuing to see more and more of the things that I have seen in dreams are happening and coming to pass. Um, I'm trying to justify what I'm saying are my dreams. I just believe the Lord showed me things to warn the church. And look, if you're not prepared, if you don't have some of the food and things like that, you you, you might be in trouble with that. Uh, the first video I, I talked about, this was my own personal opinion, you know, I talked about getting guns and ammunition. That wasn't to go all Rambo-like on people. It was to have be able to shoot animals or, you know, for, for food. And now, if you, if you try to find a gun today, you're going to have a hard time getting a gun. Unless you have friends or family you can buy something from. Ammunition is hard to find. Um, some, of, some of the companies that sell storable food, they are now five to eight weeks until you can get it. And there are some companies that have stopped selling these things. And folks, you don't have to be a, a dreamer or a genius or have insider trading understanding to realize that we're, I mean, we're in trouble. And God's been trying to wake the church up to get things ready and to listen. The health and wealth gospel is about to, find, is about to meet a reality in our country. And all those prophets that are saying, oh, there's nothing but good, nothing but good, nothing but good. You're going to stand before God one of these days, those folks are. They're going to have to answer. Just like I, I'm going to have to stand before God and answer for, for what I'm doing with these dreams. I'm not trying to make money off this stuff. I'm not trying to make a, make a form. Uh, a friend of mine uh, put another Facebook page together for me that I'm not even looked at. You know why? Because people are having trouble finding the dreams in those situations. My Facebook page has exploded. I can't even get through my own Facebook page on a daily basis. Uh, he also set up an Instagram account because so many people are trying to make contact uh, with me through Instagram. I don't have an account. <clears throat> And uh, we're trying to get the messages out, and that's, that's the reason for it. It's not about me getting a big head, because I still pastor my church. I still live in the same house. I still drive the same car. 
I'm not making major changes because of all the stuff with the dreams, but I am trying to warn the church. Things are coming. And pastors and prophets, you're telling your people it's going to be okay. I fear for you. I fear for you. So please, folks, pray pray aggressively, pray specifically, pray strategically. Say, Lord, what should I do for my family? And get on it. Get on it, get on it, get on it. I've been saying this since June. I'm going to keep saying what the Lord shows me, keep sharing the dreams the Lord shares me, but I can't make you do anything. I know what I've done for me and what I continue to do for me and my family. Folks, don't ignore the 